What is going on everyone? Welcome back for part two of the ranking of all 50 states. If you didn't see the last one, there's a link down below in the description area and there'll also be another one at the end of the video. If you don't have time for that because you're a busy, busy captain of industry, giant businessman, here's a quick recap. Number 50 to 31. Now, for the most part, the first 20 were pretty easy. There's a lot of states that have more problems than they care to talk about in polite company. I mean, honestly, who hasn't heard a fair amount of profanity when someone talks about their trip to Mississippi or Arkansas? The second half of this list is about places I would consider living or at least spending some time in. If you did see the first video, these states are being ranked by some stats like crime, cost of living, housing, things like that, schools, my experience, weird facts, and reputation. Basically, it's my opinion while taking all those things into consideration. That being said, let's start part two of the ranking of all 50 states. Number 30, Michigan. Michigan is almost two different states the upper portion and the lower portion. The upper portion is good, the lower brings the whole state down. I think it's more fair to say that lower Michigan has seen better days. It's been almost 40 years since those days, but it is getting better. At least Detroit has gotten a little bit better. In reality, if they would have planted a frickin' tree downtown at some point, it would have been a step in the right direction. Flint still has rust-colored water, but the upper part of Michigan's pretty good. Number 29, Illinois. If it wasn't for Chicago, this state would be known for East St. Louis. And that's not a good thing. Chicago is a great city with a couple really bad neighborhoods that the news blows up to scare you. I've been to Chicago on a few occasions in the last three years. Nothing but good food, good people, and good times. The rest of the state is pretty much farmland and it's a flyover state. And I also feel that silent S on Illinois is a little obnoxious. Number 28, Kansas. I drove across Kansas six years ago. It was so boring, all I heard was, are we there yet, are we there yet, are we there yet? And I was driving alone. I was yelling it out the window of the car. But if you like a nice, quiet life with a lot of open fields, Kansas at number 28 is for you. Number 27, California. The Golden State in recent years has become a little tarnished. The air quality sucks, cost of living sucks, housing sucks. It just doesn't have the appeal that it once had. Now, if you're itching to leave that comment about liberal cesspool or liberal hellhole, stop typing. We've heard it far too many times. It's boring. It's old. If you're going to leave that comment, at least be a little original. And all those of you that are dying to use that catchphrase of the week, like bias or something like that, remember, three of the top five most conservative states are Mississippi, Arkansas, and Alabama. If you make a lot of money, California is nice. If you don't make a lot of money, it's a nightmare. Number 26, Arizona. Arizona is hot, it's dry, and when it's 120 degrees outside, you can go cool off in uh, nowhere. There's no place to cool off in this state unless you've got a major electric bill because of your air conditioning. You might try the pool, but it's probably as hot as the air, so that's not very refreshing. You know why? Because they're in the middle of the freaking desert. At least they have good colleges and a low cost of living. That's something. Number 25, Wyoming. This is where we start getting a little more into states I wouldn't mind living in. Wyoming has miles of miles of open land and it's filled with decent people. The type of place people look you in the eye when they shake your hand and stop to help out if you're broken down. Their only real knock, for me at least, is it's a little too wide open. A little too sparse when it comes to cities and towns. There's no real big cities in Wyoming. They do have some scary drunk driving stats, but not so crazy that it would stop you from moving to such a great state. Number 24, Georgia. Georgia is probably my favorite southern state. Sure, it's hot and muggy like the rest of the south, but other than Atlanta and a few other places, the state is really laid back, really relaxed atmosphere. It's the type of state where people wave at you from their front porch while they drink sweet tea, you know? It's like they don't even have to know you, they'll give you a wave. Now, I've spent a lot of time in Georgia. The land is cheap, not too far outside the cities, and the cost of living isn't terrible. It's actually, other than the heat, which I don't like, it's a really great state. Number 23, Connecticut. Connecticut is the tale of two states almost. You have a few of the most wealthy towns in the United States and then you have Hartford. This is another one of those states that has a capital city going through some really hard times. Now, they're not Detroit hard times, but they're hard enough. Once you get out of some of the less than desirable cities in Connecticut, it's a really nice place to be. They have some of the best landscapes in this country. Now, here's a bit of a downer. Connecticut leads the country in breast cancer per capita. That's according to a stately.com. 
Number 22, Rhode Island. Besides the fact that people in the comment section try and tell me how dangerous Providence is, it's not. Don't try and gain your street cred in a YouTube comment section. The crime rate in Providence is 30% higher than the national average. To give you thugs from Rhode Island an idea of where you stand in the world of hoods, East St. Louis is 89% higher than the national average, and Detroit is 143% higher. Providence is a sleepy town compared to them. Rhode Island is a nice state that you could spend some time in. I enjoyed it the couple times I... Granted, it's been in quite a few years, but I enjoyed Rhode Island. It was a little quiet for my liking, but it was nice. On a downer note, it just gets a little cold sometimes, and they also lead the country in illicit drug use per capita. So that's something. They don't have that many people, so it's easy to do, I imagine. Number 21, North Carolina. North Carolina is a great state with a lot of good history and some bad history as well. Even though they're a southern state, they don't get the southern vibe like you get in, say, Georgia or Mississippi. It also doesn't get much of that heat and humidity that most of the southern states get. They have great sports and horribly passionate fans. I say horribly because sometimes they overdo it a little bit. Go to a NASCAR race, it's more like a religious event to these people. Number 20, North Dakota. After Fargo, Grand Forks, and maybe Bismarck, there isn't much to this state. They do have jobs, well-paying jobs in most cases, and a low cost of living. Those two rarely go together. Those two things do fluctuate with the cost of oil because they have a lot of oil jobs there with all the fracking and all that stuff that started a couple years ago. But compared to where this state was 20 years ago, they're in great shape. If you're the type of person that likes to live a quiet life and maybe farm, North Dakota may be for you. They do lead the country in bars and farms, so that's something. Number 19, New York. There was a time the Big Apple and pretty much all of New York was the place to be. Everyone was going to move to New York. That's not as much a thing anymore. New York City is actually losing people, and Rochester has become a bad city. Who would have seen that one coming? I always thought Rochester was nice. My son lived in upstate New York till last October, and in his words after living there two years, he said, I now know where I never want to live again. New York has more lawyers per capita than any other state in the country. Number 18, Montana. Montana is one of my favorite states. Even though it's a little light on big cities and people, it's still a pretty good state. I'm really not a fan of the eastern section of Montana. It's wide open prairies, farms, rolling hills, and not a lot to look at. I like the more mountainous western section of it. Whitefish and West Glacier are two of my favorite towns to visit. Montana leads the country in poorly paid teachers and dudes that dream about the Bass Pro Shop. Number 17, South Dakota. South Dakota, in my opinion, is the much better Dakota. There really isn't much of a difference between the states to outsiders. They're like a package deal of nothing. At least South Dakota has the Black Hills, which is loaded with folklore and frontier history. South Dakota also leads the country in concealed carry permits. So for you gun fans, that's, that's kind of cool. The other thing I like about South Dakota, land is dirt cheap. Number 16, Virginia. I've been to the amazing state of Virginia several times over the years. Each trip is filled with hiking, camping, and fishing on the Shenandoah River, which is probably one of my favorite rivers of all. It's always a good time, especially if you're with good people. But I've never been impressed by Virginia's coastal beaches. They, they're they just kind of not all that. They're not all that. Now, I know I'm spoiled being raised like within a mile of the Southern California beaches, but yeah, they just didn't do it for me. But all in all, Virginia's just a really big DC suburb, which leads the country in private sector jobs funded by the government. Number 15, Hawaii. It's a tropical island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, so yeah, it's a pretty sweet place to live. I mean, that is ever since the Japanese stopped bombing it almost 80 years ago. These days, all you have to watch out for are exploding volcanoes, a high cost of living, and Dog the Bounty Hunter, who lives in Hawaii. Side note, there's a really cool video about the history of Dog the Bounty Hunter on my friend's channel called Wavy Web Surf. I'll leave a link below. It's one of my top five channels to watch. Hawaii's cost of living is out of control. That is probably the only knock on the state. They also lead the country and people who identify with the LGBTQ community. Number 14, Nebraska. Nebraska is another place you could fall asleep while giving a speech on. That would probably be about three minutes after everyone in the audience already fell asleep. Talking about visiting and looking at videos about Nebraska make you feel like you took an ambient. But the good news is they have a great education system, a great quality of life score, and a decent economy. And if you're watching this years from now and the economy has changed in the Cornhusker state, stop typing. This video was done in early 2019 when Nebraska's economy was doing pretty good. Always get that all the time. It's like, look at the date of the video before you make a comment. Number 13, 
Massachusetts. The Pilgrim State leads the country in education, and that's not just the elementary, middle, and high school. I mean, they have some of the best universities in this country, in the world probably, in the state of Massachusetts. You have Harvard, MIT, Brandeis, Tufts, Wesley College, Boston College, that's just to name a few. There's a bunch of other ones. The Boston metro area is the only real big city in Massachusetts. Now they have a few other small cities sprinkled throughout the state, but Boston is the main hub of the state. I love this state, but they have a couple knocks. I did read a report about them having one of the worst infrastructures in the country. And the second one is they have extreme cold. Cold that gets so cold that even a dude like me who likes the cold might rethink moving to Massachusetts. They also lead the country in people that consider themselves liberals. That's kind of weird. I would have thought that would have been like Portland, Oregon, or just Oregon in general. Portland is kind of its own state sometimes. Number 12, Utah. This is a church-run state whether the locals like to admit it or not. Utah has a history that is so weird that sometimes you'll find it hard to believe. They also have some national parks that are so breathtaking, if you only see pictures and videos of these parks, you'll find it hard to believe they exist. Utah has the second best economy and the third best education system in the entire country. They also lead the country in church attendance. Who saw that one coming? Number 11, Minnesota. I've never had anything but a good time in Minnesota. The state is called the land of 10,000 lakes, and uh, to be honest, I think there's more than that. Seems like you run into a lake everywhere you go. Compared to other states, those lakes sometimes double drive time just to get to the interstate. Minnesota has the second best quality of life in the United States. They also lead the nation in whooping cough, so there's something. Minnesota is very much a family oriented state. They get high marks in everything from education, healthcare, to family life. It's not a bad place to live. Again, though, this is one of those places with some serious cold. All right, so that's the second video of the ranking of all 50 states. We went from number 30 to number 11. The last video will be coming out soon. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Don't forget all the links below. Hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. Always helps out the channel. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other.